How's it going guys? Today I want to go over another leak code question. Today we're going to go over a question called longest common prefix and this is a question that's being asked by Amazon right now. Alright guys, so today we're going over a question called longest common prefix. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon. And our problem description says write a function to find the longest common prefix string amongst an array of strings. If there's no common prefix, return an empty string. So as a first example, if we're given the strings flower, flow, and flight, we are to turn FL. And the reason for this is just the fact that all of these three strings have the two letters FL at the beginning, right? So again, flower has FL, flow has FL, and flight has FL. And the reason why this is an FL plus something else is because if we actually look at the third character, of each of these words, they're not the same, right? So flower and flow both have O's, but flight actually has an I. And so because of that, that's the limiting factor. We only have F and L as like the longest common prefix. So in example two, if we're given dog, race car, and car, we would return an empty string. And the explanation here just tells us there is no common prefix amongst the input strings. And again, the reason for that is that there actually is no common character that these words start with, right? Dog starts with a D, race car starts with an R, and car starts with a C. So again, the first characters of all these words are different, and therefore we don't actually have a longest common prefix. They don't have any character in common. They don't start with any common character. So we have to return an empty string because that is the longest common prefix. Okay, so how do we do this? So the, I feel like the logic is pretty straightforward. We're kind of talking through it. It makes sense in English, right? We just need to make sure that like the first character of every word is the same. And if it is, great, we'll add it to our variable called longest common prefix. And if it's not, we have to return whatever our longest common prefix is, and that will just start as an empty string. So again, in our first example, we would just go through all the strings and say, hey, do these all start with the same character? We'd look at the first you know, string and say, okay, it starts with an F, great. Does the next thing start with an F? It does, great. Does the last thing start with an F? It does. So F would be added to our longest common prefix. And now we would just ask the exact same question, but instead of the zeroth character, we would just want to know, are the first character of all these strings the same? And if it is, we would add it. And if not, we would basically return whatever we have. So that's like the simple case, makes sense. And it's as simple as that. The thing, it, the thing where it gets a little bit more complicated is when we have different length strings, right? So for here, if we have something like car and race car, let's say for some reason, C-A-R started with all the words, right? So it was C-A-R something for each of these three words in our example too. The problem would become when we look at the third letter, right? Maybe the next letter is an E, but car actually doesn't have a fourth letter. So we need to make sure that we don't actually go out of bounds of any of the strings, and that's the other thing we have to account for. So we know that the longest common prefix in any of these words is limited by the shortest word, right? In the best case, I guess you would want to say, if we were given flower, right, for all three of our words here, we know that the longest common possible, sorry, the longest common prefix, the longest possible one, would be just the entire uh, word, right? So again, similarly, using the same sort of logic, the longest common prefix that we can ever have is actually the length of like the shortest word, right? So again, if even if these three words started with C-A-R, C-A-R would have to be the longest common prefix because we're actually given the word car, it doesn't have a fourth character. So that's the other case we have to take care of. We have to make sure we don't index out of bounds of any of the strings that we're comparing. So let's start writing our code and let's just first put a return statement, or sorry, a, a return variable that we can actually return that will give us the result we're looking for. So we'll say something like string, because that's what we need to return. We're looking for the longest common prefix, so it makes sense to call it longest common prefix. So longest common prefix. And we said this is just gonna start as an empty string because initially we haven't checked that any of the characters all have the same first character or second character, so on and so forth. So we'll start as an empty string. And now it's always good to have that error checking, so let's just put our error checking. So if strs or strings is null, or the length of strings, so strings.length is zero, oops, zero, then we're just gonna return our longest common prefix. And again, that's gonna be an empty string, right? So if we don't actually have any strings, meaning it's null, or our length is zero, we'll just return our longest common prefix, which will be an empty string to begin with. 
Now, otherwise, you want to ask that question, right? Is the first character the same in all our strings? Is the second character the same in all our strings? That same logic. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to go through all the characters in the first word, just arbitrarily, because once we get to this point, we know we have at least a first string, right? Because we haven't actually tripped this if statement. So we can go through all the characters in the first string and basically just check, does every other character, sorry, does every other string have this character that we're currently on at the same index? And if it does, great. We'll just keep checking all our strings. If we get through all of our strings, we'll add that character to our longest common prefix. And if not, right, if we've either indexed out of the bounds of any string, that's the limiting factor. That's the smallest string we have maybe. And then we know, okay, we can't have a bigger longest common prefix than that, so we can return it. Or if the two characters aren't the same, again, it's also the limiting factor. And we could just then and there return our longest common prefix. So let's start doing that. So we're going to say we're going to have an index to represent the character that we're on in any of the strings. So we're going to say in index equals zero. And now we say we're going to go through every single character in the first string just arbitrarily, but we really could use any of them. So we're going to say for every character, so for character C in string zero dot two care array. Now we need to go through all the other strings that we have and make sure that they have the same character as C at our index position. So we're going to say for int i equals 1. And the reason why we're starting at 1 is because we don't want to compare the current string's character with its own character. Right? That doesn't make sense. It's not helpful. It will always return true because we're just comparing the string to itself. So we'll start at 1. And while i is less than strings.length, so while we haven't gone through all the strings, we need to keep comparing i plus plus. And now we have those two conditions, right? If we've actually gone out of the bounds of some string, then again, it's not possible that the longest common prefix can be longer, or the two characters don't match, then we could just return whatever we have as our longest common prefix. So if our index is greater than or equal to strings i dot length, which again is going out of bounds of one of the strings, or if c is not equal to strings i dot care at our index, then we want to return our longest common prefix. So again, if we've gone out of the bounds of one of the strings, or the two characters that we're looking at don't match, then we know we've found our longest common prefix. And otherwise, right, if we've actually gone through all of the strings, comparing the character c, making sure that every other string in our strings at the index position has the same character, then we know, okay, we can append that character C to our longest common prefix. So we'll say longest common prefix plus equals C. And then the only other thing we have to do is actually increment our index, right? So that the next time we're not comparing the zeroth characters anymore, we're comparing the first character or the second character, so on and so forth. So we'll just say index plus plus. So now guys, once we've actually gone through all the characters potentially, right, unless we break early here. We'll have gone through all the characters in the first string, comparing them to all the other characters in every other string, uh, and essentially populated or created, added to our longest common prefix, incremented our, in our index. So once we break from this, we actually have our longest common prefix. So all we had to do is return our longest common prefix. Okay, so now before we submit this code, let's just quickly talk about the runtime. And again, runtime is all however you represent your variables, right? So for here, let's just think about what we're doing. We're going through all the characters in the first string, and we're comparing it to all the characters in every other string, right? So very clearly, we're going through every single character in every string that we're given. So I could say that's O of n, where n is just the number of characters that we're given in all of our strings. Or I could also represent this as two variables. I could say, this is O of n times m, and let's say n is the number or the max number of strings that I could be given in our list. And m would be something like the max number of characters that any string could actually contain. So again, you could say this is O of n, where n is just simply all the characters we're given in all of the strings in our list. Or we could say it's O of n times n, where n is just the number of strings we're given, the max number, potentially. And then m is the max number of characters that any string can contain. In terms of the space complexity, I would say that this constant space Right, we're not really doing much, we're just declaring a few variables, which is just constant. So let's run this code, and make sure that it works. Double equals, so if strings is equal, equals null. So let's run this code again, make sure it works. If not, I had a spelling error, sorry. <laughs> uh, now let's make sure it doesn't obviously again. This is supposed to be parentheses because strings have length with parentheses. 
whatever. Awesome, and now it does. So guys, that's how to solve longest common prefix in Java. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor, leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time.